Yeah, y'all know how dirty this thing is, dude. You gotta clean it up. Look at that. Messed the glass up. Messed it up, grinding all over it. Yeah, I don't care about my stuff. That's my problem. And then you see that purple popping in it today. Look how bad it is, dude. It is bad. Y'all never tell me if I'm working on your stuff to treat your stuff like I would treat my own stuff. Cause it is bad. Oh man, we write the name in it. She about to get a bath. Cause she is dirty. God. Inside's decently clean because the windows have been closed all up. There she is. I should probably take better care of my stuff, but it's a problem when you're a painter and you do everything is you just don't value anything, man. Because you do it all yourself. Even the windshield has pitting all in it. Man. Here's where I'm at with the car. She's in the booth. Got it in primer today. Yeah, a little excessive, probably people will say, to prime and block out your front end, but hey, when you're on a body shop and you're painting body guy, that's what you do. So everything's obviously been welded. We did that the other day. And now everything's been primered and blocked out by hand, so everything is nice and smooth. Try to smooth everything out so it all looks decent. Stuff that you can see. We've got some big old clobbery welds. Don't look the best, but they'll all hold. So now all she's gotta do is go through paint. So I just washed it. I think I'm gonna let it dry. I might come in tonight and spray it. If not, it will be tomorrow, Friday. I'll try to have her home either Friday night or Saturday. But yeah, I went ahead and smoothed out all these plates. So that all of this is nice and smooth, looks like one piece. Everything is nice and all together. But it's like one piece. I think that's gonna look pretty good. Instead of seeing the welds, it'll look just like one piece all manufactured together, kind of. And a lot of it's of course gonna get hidden. But there she is. So get some paint on her and get her back to the house. So let's get started tonight. So we just prepped the vehicle, got it sprayed off, make sure it's dry, masked up a few small things, and now we're going to get ready to shoot this bad boy tonight. I feel like coming in, but decided that I should probably go ahead and get this done. That way I can get some other stuff done tomorrow. So I'm dragging this stuff out because I really don't like working on this stuff during the day on the clock while I should be working on um, other projects to make my business money. So race cars come at night uh, whenever I have spent too much time on them during the week. And this week I have spent too much time on this car. Try not to, but uh, things have to get done. It is what it is. Welding it, I was on Mike's time. Painting it on my time so I can do it at night. So anyway, we got it all prepped. We are going to shoot some Bulldog. Uh, this is just a adhesion promoter. Bulldog. I like to put this on a lot of stuff that I do that has a lot of prep work because sometimes I don't I don't do my own stuff 100%. So I've been known to scuff them down really fast 
and not be very careful. And uh, yeah, I like to spray a little bulldog on it to make sure if I missed any spots that it helps it stick. All this is adhesion promoter, so it just helps paint stick to things. It's for like plastics, chrome, stuff like that, but I use it to cheat. So. So we're gonna let that flash off for like five minutes and the product that I got left, we're gonna put in the base coat to just help it. So let's get that mixed up. All right, so got a little bit left over, not a lot. Stuff's right now running like $50 a can, it sucks, but it helps. So. I don't trust my prep when I'm in a hurry. So we're gonna find something. Let's see if I got anything that's a drop coat. So I like to drop something down first. That doesn't matter, not my actual color. I actually have a lot of this black, so I think we're gonna roll right in with it. I think this black actually has metallic in it so it's burned that up because we don't want metallic in the engine bay yeah it has some metallic in it i don't know if y'all can see that probably not it's got a little in it so we'll burn this up as a drop coat and then we will go over it with some straight black which is just your regular ford 9300 uh, paint code just straight black then i might put my color over it that's the actual color of the car but it's pretty expensive so i don't know if i want to burn that up in the engine bay and also if you get fancy okay so if you get fancy in the engine bay like i've got gold pearls uh chrome metallics all kinds of stuff in here color flop i've got color flop pearls that change blue greens and all that but here's the issue with doing that stuff in the engine bay. You're gonna get scratches, you're gonna damage the paint, especially me, if I don't care, sadly. Um, and then touch up's hard. So if I roll with just straight black and I damage something or scratch something or whatever, I can just hit it with some black spray paint or come back with an airbrush gun and just touch it up, blend it in. But if I get all fancy and put a gold pearl or color flop even though it cost me nothing because I got a whole shelf behind me full of all kinds of pearls. It just makes my life harder on the touch-up process. So we're going to try to avoid that. That was base coat, got that knocked out. There's a lot of angles. Had a little bit of water in there, so now you see me wiping my hands, wiping it off. It's not um, some brand new car, insurance job. It's a front end of tube chassis. It's not that big of a deal. To me, it's not. Some people might be more picky. Um, anyway, got a good drop coat over it. I think I got it off, so we'll go back in there. This is just the straight black. So, got coverage with the drop coat, which is some scrap paint. This is just straight black paint. I'm actually going to reduce it a little bit, cheat it, make it go a little bit farther than it's supposed to. Um, makes it a little bit more transparent when you add more reducer to it, but I'm just trying to go over what I just dropped down. Uh, get rid of the metallics that I just put on it because that paint had metallics in it. It's a Ford Tuxedo Black was the drop coat I just dropped. And it, from the factory has 
pearls in it that I don't want. I just want straight black, like I said, in case I have to touch anything up. So, but yeah, the water, just wipe it off as I go on something like this. I mean, it gets in every nook and cranny. I can let air the car dry for two days and then come back to it, but ain't got time for that car to be sitting in my shop. I want to get this done, get it out of my shop, get it back home to the garage. So now this one I'll go in there and check, make sure that I have no bare spots that aren't got. A lot of the hard to get nooks and crannies are where you'll find that you didn't get coverage at, but I'm going to check over all that, make sure we got everything and um, drop this coat and then if that looks good, move on to clear coat. straight black face coat got a little bit left over so we're gonna put it back in a can I'm gonna do a trick I like to call dirty clear coat it's basically like making a single stitch don't care what anybody says uh, a lot of people will say that um, it'll fade out your clear it'll call die back it'll all kinds of crap look I put what I call dirty clear coat on a lot a lot of stuff man uh, especially stuff where I'm trying to cover up imperfections and I didn't really do that great of a prep job on this one I did not do that great of a prep job I did not like I slicked it all out but I slicked it out with 180 so normally I'd slick it out with at least 320 a lot of people recommend to go 400 or 600 I'm not especially not on something like that 180 cuts the primer down good fast easy so that's what it's gonna get, man. Um, it'll look good when it's finished, watch. Um, so basically we're gonna mix clear coat and then we're gonna put it in our can of base coat, shake it up, not gonna clean the gun out. We're gonna leave the leftovers in the gun. Um, I just shoot regular Omni 270, budget, uh, everyday clear. all for that can I think these cans are like I think like 130 a can and I can't remember if the hardener is extra or not I just I need it so I just buy it I don't pay that much attention to price so much much of anything that I need no reason to complain about price on everyday products that you have to have that's how I see it mixed four to one that means four parts clear coat one part hardener one part reducer Touch of accelerator in this actually even though I'm not in a hurry because it does help the clear coat kind of tack up fast and dry faster meaning it's less likely to run and I do like to put my jobs on really wet um, sometimes it bites me in the butt and I don't as you see we're gonna use the dirty mixing stick and it just kind of well, you can't really see it but it just makes the the base coat comes off of everything and gets all in the clear and gives it a tinted smoke clear this is the same way that I would do like tail lights or anything I would put a little base coat in my clear so and it's not gonna hurt anything take that in a can basically this is like cleaning the can out of all the base coat getting it in the clear coat the last little bit that I got left a base coat I'm gonna use even the dirty filter that way I want all the black leftover base coat that I can get in this clear, I want it in this clear. 
pour half the can out, and then I'm going to reshake to try to really get it out of the can. Now, if I wanted to get it all, what I've done in the past is mix my clear, and then put the amount of reducer I need in my base coat can. Uh, reducer will really break down that uh, base coat where it turns it to like water, basically, where you can just pour it straight in your clear a lot better, but this works the same way. Now we have a tinted black clear coat. This is going to fill in a lot of scratches, more imperfections, and it's just going to make the final product look like I spent a whole lot more time on it than I actually did. Because I'm not here to put in 100 hours on the front end. Like, I mean, I, I like to make myself look good, go the extra mile, you know? But it gets a uh, point and when it's just to me it's stupid um, you can make stuff look good and make it look like you put a ton of time into it and you still have to put some time into it. I mean, don't get me long it spent me spent I spent two hours blocking and sanding that primer earlier today um, and it's probably gonna be an hour or so tonight painting um, but it's gonna look like I let's say put six hours into it so uh, you can learn how to cut corners on a lot of stuff that's not gonna hurt anything it's gonna look perfectly fine for what it is. clear coat for the uh, first coat I burned it all up if you remember so I decided I want to put at least a couple coats on it so shout out to Eddie my employee I tried to pawn that up on you uh, I replaced his clear a while back with one and it, ha it just happened to be this one I swear I didn't do it on purpose but it looks like now I'm gonna be stuck with the busted can because then what I'll do this is brand new he keeps some for his side projects and I will be replacing it. So uh, there you go, Eddie. You don't have to deal with the busted can at all. So here's what I was talking about a minute ago with the dirty clear. So I ran it through there again, but as you can see, the can is pretty clean because I have put clear in it and cleaned it out. As you can see, this clear coat is dirty. Basically, it's a tent to smoke. So if you look, let's see here, watch this. Let's take this mixing stick with white on it, dip it in there. See, the bubbles are just probably being shook up, but you can see how that side's definitely darker. So it's got like a tint to it. Um, just trying to listen. See, it's got a light, a little bit of base coat in it. So our last coat is going to be mostly clear, clear coat, uh, not tinted but I am still using up a little bit more because like I said, this is the front end of a tube chassis and I'm not worried about dieback or anything like that. If this was some insurance job or something high end, I would not be doing this, but this is my stuff and I'm not worried about it. All right, so let's go see the finished product. What we got, turn this paint booth off.
So that is it for tonight. We will get this thing out of this paint booth tomorrow and get this thing on the trailer back to the house. Um, I'll go over it tomorrow when it is outside. <laughs>